What up guys, it's Ian Knobloch from The Degenerates, and this is going to kind of be a new format of video until I ship out for um, the Navy boot camp. Um, so, if you um, have me on Snapchat, I've been posting a lot of um, conservative ideas and stuff, and just things I have learned, and that I have done my own research on, and that I, becoming an adult now, have kind of taken into my own mind and is now shaping me as a person. Um, I, I hope that is informative, even if you don't agree with my opinions, I hope you respect them, and I hope that you, it makes you think just a little bit. Because whenever I hear any idea from the left or liberals, I do take time to go look into it, such as like things as New Green Deal, um, uh, what is it, um, defund the police, stuff like that. I've looked into them. And that's why I don't like these ideas, and I found them completely against my idea of what America should be. So, um, these are going to kind of be what I'm um, going to do. Um, I don't know how many times a week I'm going to do them. I guess whenever I find a topic that I want to really talk about. And today's topic is actually about today itself. Today is Father's Day, so before we get started, if you have a father figure, a father, or grandfathers, a male figure in your life that um, you look up to kind of as a father, um, go give them a hug, say thank you, um, go tell them you love them because they are so important and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So, for me, being uh, growing up in this 21st century, I've noticed something very important, and that is fathers are being scrutinized, they're being neglected, and they're being not prosecuted, but of the sorts um, that they're terrible people and that they're not needed. And first off, I completely disagree with that. If you can't already tell, I. I have an amazing dad. He's taught me so much, and I look up to him. We have our off moments, of course, but um, he is my dad, and he's taught me so much in life. So, first off, let's start with this guy named Paul Ameto. I don't know if I said his last name right. Um, he's a psychologist who studies parent-child relationships at Pennsylvania State University. Um, first off, I'm going to read a couple things from him, but the very first thing I disagree with him on. Uh, that um, so there's of course um, be some stuff before this to men holding his baby that may seem like a given but importance of dads has recently been neglected I completely disagree with it um, what he's saying and he continues to say it is that in the recent years dads have started to no longer care they've started to give up and in some communities you can say I agree with that but most times, I would say that dads are trying even harder nowadays to um, be there, to try and comfort their kids, to try and be in their kids' lives, because there's so much pushback, so much neglect towards them. Um, now, I'm going to read some more from him. And this just states what happens when a father is not present. Um, so far, they know that kids who grew up with a presence, immer I mean, engaged dads are less likely to drop out of school or wind up in jail compared to children with absent father and no other male caretakers or role models. When kids have close relationships with father figures, they're less likely to have sex at a young age and tend to avoid other high-risk behaviors. They're more likely to, ha to have higher paying jobs and healthy, stable relationships when they're growing up. They also tend to have higher IQ tests by the age of three and endure fewer, fewer physical problems and psychological problems throughout their lives when fatherhood is taken seriously. So all of that I completely agree with. I have several friends um, from all over the United States that I know don't have fathers and they have gone through at least one of these um, things, high risk behaviors, teen pregnancies, um, psychological problems, and that's the last point right there is kind of the main thing, psychological problems. So moving on to another site. Uh, called uh, National Fatherhood Initiative. Um, very first thing this site says is that there is a father absent crisis in America and I do agree with that um, primarily in the black communities. Now I don't want to sound racist or anything but it is a fact out of all the races there are in the United States and there are many um, I'm quite most of them 
uh, the African American community is hit the hardest with absent fathers. Uh, there are about 19.7 million children without fathers or a father figure in their life. That's one in four children. And when I said the main um, thing that hit me is the psychological, this is where that comes from, the one in four. One in four children can be subjug subjugated to psychological problems. And those problems all relate to these things. They are four times greater risk of being in poverty, both as a child and as adult, seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen, more likely to have behavioral problems, more likely to face abuse and neglect, more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, more likely to go to prison, two times more likely to suffer obesity, more likely to commit a crime, and two more times likely to drop out of high school. And not even before that, before they get to any of that, they are two times greater risk of actually have being D dying as an infant, infant mortality. It's a terrible thing. But going back to the psychological thing, it affects a kid. If they get through all of that, if they, if they survive poverty, if they survive obesity, uh, if they drop out of high school, if they get through all of that and are okay, but not okay, but like, you know, if they survive it, if they come out stronger, they are 52% more likely not to be in their own child's life. So let's say the person that is seven times more likely to become a parent as a teen is 52%, over half, more likely to not even be in that kid's life. It just starts a chain reaction and it just keeps going down and down. That's the psychological thing because a kid without a father is going to grow up thinking, I don't need a father. I never needed a father. I had a mother. I had someone else who took care of me. So this kid doesn't need a father. And that's how it goes for most things. If you don't see someone doing the right thing, you're never going to know it's the right thing, right? That's why parents always teach us, say, please, thank you, sorry, stuff like that. And one of the main things that also is being neglected about um, fathers is the divorce system not just a divorce system but mothers see one of the biggest things I have a problem with is kind of like the liberal left right now because in the recent years they've put out so many commercials let's say Gillette put out a commercial last year where it just showed fathers being terrible on Father's Day and also sh um, the what was it the toilet paper company Angel Soft I don't think that's the company I think it's the name of it but they put out a commercial I think three years ago now where it was just a video of people thanking their mothers on Father's Day and while I think mothers are amazing people and everyone needs a mother of course just like everyone needs a father they have Mother's Day why do you need to say happy Father's Day to your mother they're not your father they're never gonna be your father and that's one of the big things and it's not just people neglecting fathers and putting it on their mothers. It's mothers neglecting father. One of the biggest things that children, once again, psychologically take in is what parents say about each other. So take a divorced couple. Whatever the mother is, says about the father, the kid is going to remember. The mother uh, says terrible things that their father was a crack addict or he was a criminal, stuff like that. The kid is going to remember that. They're never going to live that down. Whenever they're going to see their father, they're going to think, that guy took crack, that guy committed a crime. And while all of those are terrible things, it's a terrible thought for a kid. A kid should never know that their parents are doing terrible things. Because to a kid, their parents should be kind of like a gold star. They should be the standard you want to. Even if they are doing terrible things, a parent should always try to, in the eyes of their kid, be um, a shining star. But it's not just mothers. Of course, like I said, it's also fathers. But it's just the court system itself. 90% of um, child custody cases and divorce cases go in favor of the mother or the woman. Why? Well, um, from a site called... Oh, this is an attorney site. So yeah, this is an attorney from... Utah, yeah, Utah, and I'm just gonna read a couple art, um, 
paragraphs from the or yeah, a couple but let's get started reasons why women get are why the mother is more likely to be awarded child custody reasons why women get primary or sole physical custody of a child in divorce more often than men can vary from case to another but it is true that courts in utah and all across the united states tend to be biased against men when awarding child custody for a very variety of reasons for better or worse culture plays the predominant role in determining child custody from a culture and historic perspective women have always been considered superior parents based on a questionable assumption that infants and young children would not be able to survive without mothers since men cannot nurse and breastfeed babies and while this notion persists in many uh, many utah family courts it does not change the fact that baseless and unjustified bias against men could constitute gender discrimination and that's what this is it's gender discrimination just the whole idea that fathers are not needed that a male figure is not needed and that um we shouldn't even have father's day it's just gender discrimination and if you want to talk about um um gender equality you need to talk about both sides you can't just say oh women are unequal they're not going to be paid more or they're being paid less while that's not true you also i do believe that in society women are kind of looked down upon but you cannot rise women above men that's not how equality works you can't rise above someone it's the exact same thing with racism you cannot put black people above white people you have to put them on the exact same level that is what the definition of equality is a equals a it's not a equals b because b is after a so you have to make black people a white people are a that's that's a given in the united states we gotta ra raise black people from a b to an a i did not mean to make them b i did not mean that at all but it just worked out so continuing along with the article a man a man would be able to fight back against the culture bias and ensure the fair trial if he's represented by oh well that's just an ad so i'm gonna forget that entire last line um it this article then goes on to um talk about uh bias against men in family courts could be gender discrimination it just talks about how it's more like that and there are actually several in wichita now that represent only men that are being discriminated and voted against in these courts um all these sites that i'm using will be um, posted down below so one of the big things is talking about is gender discrimination and as i just said you cannot rise anyone above the other because that is unequal and so to put women in a higher light than men especially when it comes to a child is ridiculous because a lot of times the mother is not the best in my case my parents are divorced I lived with my mother for six years in this divorce me and her fought a lot we were not on the same page on a lot of things I eventually actually had to leave the house and I had to live with my father and since then I have been a much happier person uh, me and my father get along much better uh, than me and my mother do um, I do see my mother sometimes, but not all the time, because we are just, we clash heads so much. We're both very hot-headed. My father is too, but we're kind of on the same page on a lot of things. And that's one of the big things. Sometimes the mother just isn't the best, but my mother was awarded child custody. Exact same for my sister. When, for me, I think my dad should have definitely been, because he's, for me, the much better parent. So going back to the notion of gender discrimination um that is a topic that i want to get into another video on um because it is a massive topic and uh that video will po most likely be about uh what is it uh unequal or equal and unequal pay how people are treated within sports and much more about that stuff so i hope you guys enjoyed this if you have any comments um if you guys would like to hear other voices um other guests i will definitely get them on i'm hoping to get some uh people that believe in the other view that um see the other side um on because i think it'll be really fun to have discussion about them to both of us get facts 
and to um, hear each other out. So yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Hopefully you guys have an amazing day. And once again, if you are a father or you have a father figure, um, happy Father's Day and make sure they know that they are appreciated.